Hey, it's Ted here. I've got my first ever uh, DPS D1. So this is a second generation of DPS drives. It has a clutch pack in it. Bellows failed, as you can see, U joints have uh, gotten corroded. So we're gonna change the whole inner drive shaft, all of this. Uh, I got it all loose, I'm gonna take it out and then I'm gonna give you a quick peek inside of the clutches, just so you can see what it looks like instead of having a cone clutch. There are now clutch packs in here. So let me pull this up and then we'll take a look at it. Mike, you want to give me a hand? Mm -hmm. Take this right out. Okay, it's Mike, one of our students here. And he's going to slide that right out. Okay, you can stop right there. Perfect. All right, and then I'll show you the inside. Just zoom in there and what I All right, so here's the inside and you can kind of see how there's a clutch pack now on the bottom, one, two, three, and on the top, one, two, three. And the shift actuator, I'm gonna move that so you can kind of see what goes on in here. All right, so you can see that as you move that cone up and down, it actually is compressing the clutches. So that's forward, that's neutral, and that is reverse going up. So you can see how it compresses the clutches. Pretty cool, ingenious design, super quiet. Uh, shifts real smooth and the main reason they designed this was for obviously joystick stern drive so um, I've got to change that shaft but there's nothing inside here I have to touch so uh, I'm still waiting for one of them in probably another 10 years or so that I'm gonna have to rebuild these so if I get one I'll take it apart and we'll do a video on that on how to change the clutches but that will be in the future all right, so this is the DPSD, and we're going to take uh, and put the shims back in when we put this back together. I'm going to measure them. I'm going to do the measurements to make sure everything looks the same. This is a pretty much a brand new hair case. So I want to make sure everything goes back the same. But I'm going to do the dimensional measurement here. I got zero of my dial on our hair caliper here. Make sure that's zero. Locations average dimensions. Okay, seven, six, five. Yeah, seven, six, five. Okay. Let me write that down. Okay, let's slide this through the yoke. Hold that, break this loose. And that bolt is tight, baby. Got that Loctite on it. Okay, so we're going to change this whole piece and you can actually see there's water on here. So there's the water inside this house and so I got to take it all apart and clean it. And you know that yoke shaft could be replaced but they don't sell it without the U-joints so you got to buy the whole assembly. So I got to press this apart because I want to change that seal. And there's water in here so I definitely want to take this all apart and clean it because of the water in there and change that seal. Make sure the bearings look okay. Everything feels good but I want to clean it out. All right, so I got this all pressed apart. All the bearings and all the gears, like I said, look virtually brand new. I mean, there's virtually nowhere on this gear. So we're gonna try to put it back exactly where it was, use the same shims. I took that dimension. I'm gonna try to press it together, get the rolling torque, and hopefully the dimension is the same. All right, so we got some synthetic gear lube we're gonna put on here. Uh, I rinsed it all out in clean parts cleaner. And I'm going to lube it up real well so that oil gets in all the bearings so everything stays lubricated. All right, so we're going to put this on that uh, 259 tool to support it. And then we're going to put that in the press. Okay, in the uh, bag with a brand new drive shaft is the bolt, brand new bolt we're going to use. I'm going to put a drop of Loctite on that. And we have a brand new crush lead here that we have to put in. 
I like to do is to check the crush sleeve before I install it. Take a reasonably clean rag, put the crush sleeve on the rag, and look at all that debris. I'm going to take this in the parts cleaner tank. I'm going to clean that all off before I put it together. And I just took some car cleaner here, sprayed it on the rag, and wiped off the bolt. And you can see just how dirty that bolt is. So don't just put a brand new bolt in there. Clean it all off, and then you can actually wait for it to dry a little bit. Maybe use the other side of the rag. And now the bolt threads are nice and clean, and I'm, that's ready to put a lock tight on. One other interesting thing that I noticed when I took this apart was they're still using the original two-sided seal. And um, they have replaced that, and this comes in the kit as the one-sided seal. I'm gonna, I have some extra two-sided original seal, so I'm actually gonna put the original seal back in here, not this replacement seal. So just like in the past, we're gonna use this uh, 607 tool that fits inside that seal put that over there, we're going to bring this to the press and we're going to press it down until it's flush and then we'll put the snap ring in it. Okay, so I got the seal in there, I'm going to put the snap ring back in and then I'll pack the seals with grease. reassembly here so slide that back in there. Okay. And it's on. We're ready for the new bolt and the lock button. Uh, as I do that, I'm going to start to measure this height. I want to put this gear back where it was if I can, so they all mesh back up to the same location. Okay, so here we go. We're going to set that rolling torque on this. I'm just going to wiggle this around, tighten it down, so it gets some tension on it. Check that and see what that dimension is right there. That dimension is where I want it to be. Then I'm ready to put it back together. Wow. Right there. That's money. Okay, let's check that rolling torque. I do have some tension on it.
get this thing back together today, I'll be really happy. I'll have one done. shims off, parts cleaner, clean them all off, wipe them down, and then uh, we're going to put it right back together the way it was, retorque the bolts, I got an O-ring here, um, and that's it, it's ready to go back together. <laughs> 